Today we're going to talk about 8NS2, that would be 8th grade, uh, the number system, and the uh, second standard in the number system. It's also the last standard that we're going to be talking about here um, in the NS category. A couple of terms I'd like you all to write down, so pause the video and copy down these words in your journal and define them as best as you can. Pause the video. All right, I have a diagram on the board here. It's a polygon. As you can see, it appears to be a square. And I say that uh, purposely. I, I don't always um, assume that it's a square until uh, I measure the polygon or the directions or the textbook or book that you're reading it from uh, tells you that it's a square. And I will officially tell you that this is a square. Um, we don't have any units on this picture. I don't know if it's measuring in inches, uh, feet, yards, etc. So I'm gonna call these units. This is a box on the top that measures in at one, two units on the top, and on the side we have one, two units. So if I were to do the area of this figure, I would multiply the top and the side, so we call it side times side. So area is equal to two times two is four units, and we're talking about a square. We're talking about two dimensions, so that's why it's units squared. All right, I can adjust the look of this picture by dragging one of the sides here. All right, I now have a rectangle, and today I'm not dealing with rectangles. I'm dealing with squares. So I'm going to also take the bottom of this figure and drag it down an additional unit. And now we're going to measure um, the top again and the side. As you can see, we have on the top one, two, three units this time. And on the side, we have one, two, three units. Calculating the area again, A is equal to side times side, which is nine. And we are in two dimensions, so we are squaring it. Units to the second power. Now, the reason I'm doing all this is for the fact that we're going to talk about perfect squares today. Now, what makes up a perfect square? Well, as you saw in the, in the last two pictures, this number 4 is able to be multiplied 2 times itself. The second picture that I gave you, 3 multiplied by itself. So 2 times 2 is 4, and 3 times 3 is 9. We call these perfect squares. And I can quickly finish off these numbers that I would like you to memorize. I'd like you to memorize all the perfect squares up to 15. So we know that 16 would give us 4 times 4. And don't forget about... One. one is actually the first number on our perfect square list because one times itself is equal to one. You can continue this whole line over here on the right. Uh, I'm not going to do it all for you. You could uh, just figure out that uh, nine times nine, ten times ten, etc., all the way down to 225, which would give you 15 times 15. In the upper right hand corner we have a symbol, a new symbol that we're going to talk about. Uh, it's called the square root symbol, also known as the radical symbol. And inside the P represents some number uh, that we haven't figured out yet. You know, We haven't put a number under the radical yet, uh, which I will do right now. Let's just take uh, 100, it's pretty famous. You guys know about 100. So if I were to take the square root of 100 you know, that's replacing this letter P. I put 100 in there for it. And it's saying, what is the square root of 100? The square root is that number that we were talking about on the polygon. What number multiplied by itself gets 100? And that answer would be 10. To be more specific, it is 10 and 0 tenths. That is a rational number. We talked about rational numbers uh, previous, 
previously this year. And we know that a rational number will either terminate, which is what this one did. It has no remainder. Um, it ended. And, um, or it would repeat. And this one doesn't repeat. This one happens to terminate. So this is a rational number. Let's pick one more out here. How about 144? So that's saying, what is the square root of 144? And we know that as the answer being 12, or 12 and 0 tenths, keeping it rational. On this screen, we are now going to talk about the numbers uh, that are not rational. We call them irrational numbers. And if you were to type this into your calculator, let's see if I could find a calculator here for you somewhere. There we go. Uh, I think this has a square root button. So here's the square root button. Let's take the square root of 23. And it comes out to be a very long decimal, 4.795832. There's just no, there's no repetition. It doesn't repeat, and it doesn't uh, seem to terminate either. And it, it's pretty close to 5. Well, if I were to approximate this uh, square root of 23, radical 23, I could go back to my chart that I started with right here. Let me clear this off again. And I would say, where does 23 fall on my chart that I have memorized? Well, 23 is going to be somewhere in between 16 and 25. Somewhere in between there. It's not a perfect square, as we saw. It's a decimal. So let's take that square root of 23 and put it between our 16 and our 25, which are perfect. We know that this is 4.0 and this is 5.0. So I would say that this square root of 23 isn't equal to, but it's approximately somewhere in between 4 and 5. Well, we got the exact answer on our calculator. Um, so when we approximate, I want you to think of the number line. The number line here, uh, 23, kind of being you know, in between 16 and 25. This one is actually seven units away from 23 on the number line. And the 25 is only two units away from 23 on the number line. So I would say that the square root of 23 is much closer to the square root of 25. So I'm going to say that it is approximately 5. Approximately. This symbol is very important because we know that it's not 5. It's about 5. So where is that going to go uh, when we plot it on the number line diagram below? Well, it's close to 5. And 23 is actually a little smaller than 25. So we're going to be a little closer to 0. So instead of putting the answer right on the 5, Remember, it was when we did on the calculator, it was almost 5, around 4.8 or so. So let's approximate it right around there and call it the square root of 23. It's approximately where it goes. OK, the next example has a negative sign in front of the radical. Uh, we call this negative the square root of 10. And this is a grouping symbol, this square root sign. So what the negative is doing is it's saying that we're going to take the value of negative 1 on the outside, and we're going to multiply it by the square root of 10 on the inside. So we have to figure out what that square root of 10 is you know, in approximation, uh, and then apply the negative to the answer at the end. So let's, again, scoot all the way back. We know that 10 isn't on our perfect square list, but we can find the approximation of where it might be. Let's go check that out. 10 would be between 9 and 16. So it's between this guy and this guy, between 9 and 16. So let's go put it between 9 and 16. There's my 9. There's my 10, 
and there's my 16. So this is equal to, we know, 3.0, and this is equal to 4.0. So this one is going to have to be approximately, well, who is it closer to? Well, on a number line, this guy is one unit away, and this one is six units away. So it appears to be a little bit closer to the uh, square root of nine. So we would say that this is approximately three. And don't forget, over here, we're gonna have to take our negative on the outside, our negative one, and multiply it by, I'll just put in there the approximately three because it's really not three. And we're gonna get approximately negative three. All right, where does that go on our number line? Well, the square root of 10, 10 is a little bit bigger than nine, so we're gonna go a little bit further away from zero. So we're not gonna be at negative three, we're gonna be a little bit further away, it's a little bit more away from zero, so we're gonna be right around here. And approximate that as the negative square root of 10. Um, we're adding in cubic roots this year uh, very quickly. The symbol up in the upper right says we have the cubic root of some letter P. And I put a little picture of the Rubik's Cube, which I'm sure you're uh, familiar with. And we are now in the three-dimensional world. Uh, the square that we had as a diagram before was only in two dimensions, side and side. Now we're talking about three dimensions. I'll do my best here to kind of show you. Let's look at the yellow square on the top. So we, here are two dimensions that we talked about before, just on the top. And now we add in this third dimension on the side. So we have one dimension, the second dimension, and now we add in this third dimension. Um, and it means the same thing, and except we're finding the number that multiplies by itself three times. So what multiplied by what multiplied by what is equal to one? Well, that would be one again. One times one times one. What gets us eight? What? Two multiplied by itself multiplied by itself. So we have two as being the cube root of 27. Now let's see what it looks like as an actual problem. Uh, so we have our symbol. We put the third root or the cubic root in there and the number 64. So think of the number in your head right now that multiplies by itself three times now to get 64. And I'll save you the time and it's going to be four. Four times four times four is equal to 64. And then one last one on the bottom here for you. The cubic root of a thousand says what times itself times itself to get a thousand? Well, that would be 10. 10 times 10 times 10 gets you 1,000. Okay, there is a perfect cubes. Last problem. In the standard, it says we're going to be evaluating an expression. This is an expression. We don't know what the answer is until we plug in or substitute our values for A and B and then solve it using our order of operations. So let's quickly fill in where A and B go. We have 2 radical 11 plus the B is 5, and we're going to square it. And uh, let's think back to what the order of operations are. Uh, some people say PEMDAS. I'm sure you learned PEMDAS earlier in, in your uh, maybe your elementary life. Um, I actually use the word GEMDAS, G-E-M-D-A-S. And I use the G uh, because, you know, P stands for parentheses, and it's not always parentheses that you start with. You start with all the grouping symbols. And I see here um, the grouping symbol as the radical sign right here. So I'm going to do everything under that grouping symbol first. So 2 
grouping symbol 11. Uh, well, I can't add 11 and 5 according to my order of operations. I did the grouping symbol, and now I need to do inside the exponents before I do my adding. So E comes before A. So we have 11 plus 5 to the second power. 5 times 5 is 25. Okay. Now I still have the grouping symbol to simplify underneath it. So I'm going to keep that 2 until the end. 2 radical 11 plus 25 is 36. Let's bring that over here. 2 radical 36. We learned on our perfect square chart, it happens to be one of our perfect squares, that the square root of 36 is actually equal to 6. So we could take off that radical sign, you know, get rid of it, replace it with a 6. The 2 touching the radical means multiply. Anytime you have a number touching a grouping symbol, we mean multiply. So 2 times 6 is equal to final answer of 12. Now that problem was a little bit more on the difficult side. Uh, we're going to be doing a lot more of those in class together. Again, the whole idea of the video is just to give you uh, a heads up on what's to come. Maybe you could look at it at, at your own time and your own pace um, and have an idea of what you need to do when you get to class and, and we can talk together individually or a small group. In your journal, I'd like you to define the given terms. Uh, it's on page two, as always, in our flip chart. And then uh, write a few sentences, noteworthy sentences that you think you uh, learned from this video.